tibial nerve. The tibial nerve is derived from ventral divisions of ventral rami of L4 to S3 spinal nerves and it is a component of sciatic nerve. It arises as a terminal branch of the sciatic nerve on the back of the thigh that is at the junction between upper two thirds as well as lower one third of the thigh and enters the popliteal fossa. In the popliteal fossa, the tibial nerve lies lateral to the top of the popliteal vessels and becomes superficial to them at the knee as it crosses to the medial side of the artery. And in the popliteal fossa, the tibial nerve gives a branch called as sural nerve. Remember that sural nerve is joined by a sural communicating nerve which is a branch of the common peroneal nerve and it supplies the skin on lower part of back of the leg, lateral border and adjoining part of the dorsum of the foot as well as lateral side of the little toe. And from the popliteal fossa, the tibial nerve enters the posterior compartment of the leg by passing deep to the tendinous arch of the origin of the soleus along with the posterior tibial vessels. In the leg, the tibial nerve is medial to the artery at first and it then crosses posterior to the artery from medial to the lateral side and then runs along lateral side of the artery. So just above the flexor retinaculum, the tibial nerve gives off medial calcaneal branches and finally it terminates deep to the flexor retinaculum by dividing it into medial as well as lateral plantar nerves. What about the innervation? It has motor as well as sensory innervation. If you talk about the motor innervation in the popliteal fossa, it innervates plantaris, gastrocnemius and popliteus. And in the leg, it gives innervation to the soleus, that is the deep part, flexor digitorum longus, tibialis posterior, as well as flexor hallucis longus. This is what is about the motor innervation by the tibial nerve. What is sensory innervation? Medial calcaneal branches are the one which pierce the flexor retinaculum and supplies the skin of back and lower surface of the heel. We know about the sural nerve which is a branch of the tibial nerve supplies the skin on the lower lateral part of the leg, lateral border and adjoining part of the dorsum of the foot and lateral side of the little toe. Now let us talk about the clinical correlation that is the tibial nerve injury. Tibial nerve is more commonly injured by lacerated wounds in the popliteal fossa or maybe because of posterior dislocation of the knee joint. What are the symptoms? Motor symptoms are as follows. Foot is dorsiflexed and averted especially due to paralysis of the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg. And there is loss of prominence of cough and uh, tendocalcaneus especially due to paralysis of gastrocnemius and soleus and loss of plantar flexion of foot is mainly due to paralysis of flexors of ankle and inability to stand on toes mainly because of loss of plantar flexion of the foot and this is about the motor loss due to tibial nerve injury and what about the sensory loss Loss of sensation in the sole as well as plantar aspects of the toes including dorsal aspects of their distal phalanges mainly due to the involvement of its cutaneous branches. After discussing the motor as well as sensory loss, let us discuss few important points about the tarsal tunnel syndrome. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a compression of the tibial nerve in the osseofibrous tunnel under flexor retinaculum of the ankle. What are the symptoms? The symptoms are pain and paresthesia in the sole of foot and it often become worse in the night. And by this we completed the tibial nerve, its branches as well as its clinical application.